also approaching a pretty big other anniversary, the, the 20th anniversary of continued human presence aboard the International Space Station. Um, the space station is an unbelievable science platform, not just for NASA, but internationally and now commercially so much more now than ever. How important is the role of the space station in general, but also for the progression of science? It, uh, it's a very important role. I love thinking about that uh, anniversary coming up. I love thinking about how there wasn't a single day in the last 20 years when every human was on the planet. We made sure that we were utilizing this amazing resource of our microgravity laboratory every single day. Um, and that we prioritize that, uh, not just as a country, but as a world, as a collective humanity. And so to me, um, you know, the inspirational aspects of that and the representation that that is an example of how we can do amazing things when we come together is a really important part of that. But as you mentioned, the science is equally as important and the specific benefits that have come back to Earth from the space station, you know, pharmaceutical development, um, fundamental research in physics, fluid dynamics, combustion, all the things we've learned about our universe um, through some of the telescopes on the space station. I mean, the list goes on and on. And that's just talking about the science, not even the technology development spinoffs and the economic impacts. Um, it, it's absolutely huge. It's kind of, I see it as a science amplifier because it can, the space station allows us to achieve scientific um, discoveries that really are not possible on earth. Um, you know, just purely because of the environment. So it's a really exciting time. And, Another aspect of that is that we're using technology development and science done on the space station to inform future missions, going you know, back to the moon, obviously, with the Artemis mission in a few short years, and then carrying that even farther and going back to Mars, answering some of our biggest questions there. So it is just, it's, it's a platform for all of that. And the fact that we prioritize that as a world is really exciting. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if, you know, looking back on all of the unbelievable work that you have done on station, are there any experiments that you're especially proud to have worked on and been a part of? Well, I, there's so many, it's really hard to pick just one. I did hundreds in my time there. And then, you know, in the life of the space station, there's been over 3000. So especially because they span such a wide range of the different types of science that's available out there. You know, I'm a physical sciences person and my background's in physics and electrical engineering. So of course I gravitate towards uh, those types of fundamental experiments. But interestingly, some of the ones that were most um, rewarding to be a part of were more, not necessarily in my field of expertise, but they were the ones that had a discovery that had such tangible benefits for Earth uh, simultaneously. So one of those is called microgravity crystals. And right along with the researchers that I was working with on the ground, I got to see crystals of proteins that could be utilized um, for future pharmaceutical development to fight some of the, you know, most important diseases of our time. I was seeing the first crystals of those proteins that had ever been seen. I was seeing them alongside of them at the same time, you know, using a microscope and our, our uh, telemedicine and them seeing the same thing I was seeing. And I, I think, like I've said before, one of the coolest things you can ever hear uh, a researcher say on the other end of, you know, your comm link is that they're not sure either. And that means you're truly in the midst of a discovery. And that's an exciting time. So that was one that really sticks out. Now, on the physical sciences front, I have to give a shout out to Cold Atom Labs because that is an experiment that is creating, you know, the coldest place in the new universe down to talking billionths of a degree above absolute zero. And as so, someone who, uh, you know, studied all the theoretical equations creating these uh, forms of math of matter <laughs> and all their wave functions and seeing that we can actually create those states of matter um, with the aid or in the environment of microgravity was, was really cool. I said all those integrals are totally worth it now that I've been able to be involved with that experiment. Yeah, the cold atom lab it consistently blows my mind. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Totally. Um, so approaching this really, really historic 20 year mark, where do you see the space station and kind of human presence in low earth orbit in general 20 years from now? The, yeah. I guess, 40 year mark hearkening back to that beginning of that continued human presence? Well, like a lot of things that have kind of a long trajectory, uh, I see that 
we're going to move in a direction where NASA isn't the one necessarily sponsoring the research or incubating the research, but we've created an environment where it's been fostered to the point where it's ready to be handed off, and it already has been handed off to private industry, to other research organizations, and NASA is just one of many customers that are interested in this resource of low Earth orbit. And so I envision a space station that is run by a business that, you know, basically allows different customers to come and utilize that space for whatever variety of reasons it may be, industrial, um, plain old research, or maybe just the curious, the people, the explorers, um, other people that want to visit space. So I really see it being opened up as a more, um, something that's more attainable for a lot of different groups. Um, and meanwhile, NASA has sort of turned its sights on deeper exploration. Hopefully we have a Mars presence by then. Um, and we've incubated this um, industrial kind of um, commercial and economic engine of low Earth orbit through the investment in the space station that we're making right now. Absolutely. So looking at that future of space exploration, looking to Mars, looking to returning to the moon, you are still very much an active astronaut. You, <laughs> you are t absolutely eligible to be the first woman to land on the moon and then to potentially even go on and travel to Mars. How do you feel about both of those potential journeys? Well, I mean, I think everyone in the astronaut office right now is really excited about that. We're excited about the direction we're going back in, all the scientific return, the aspects of just human exploration that are, are on the forefront right now. So, of course, I'm super excited. I'm excited to get back into all my training right now. Uh, it's been uh, just over six months since I returned. So getting, you know, contributing again to human spaceflight and all the logistics and operations that we've got going on, it, it's great to be back into the game. And um, knowing, you know, that I will actually just know the person that gets to walk on the moon and the people that get to walk on the moon is exciting enough for me. So um, that's kind of what I'm focused on right now. Mm -hmm.